some of the things that separate the two as well as the individual functionality of the two. Still with me? We're going to talk about why you would want to buy an ADD converter later, but first of all, let's consider if you are going to buy one, what, what are some things you want to consider? First thing probably is cost. Next, we'll look at the audio <coughs> I.O. capability. What do I mean by that? Basically, what, what kind of audio can you send into it? What does it send out? What are the connections? Uh, and the third thing you probably want to consider is the number of channels, audio channels. You'll also want to consider the resolution, which is the bit depth and the sample rate. And then there may be other miscellaneous compatibility uh, features that you're looking for. Specifically, maybe you want to buy a third-party A to D, D to A converter that is compatible with Pro Tools HD. Okay? Maybe you're just not happy with the hardware that Pro Tools offers for their, their uh, HD system. There are other companies known as third-party manufacturers that make interfaces that you can use instead of Avid's hardware. Okay? So that's maybe some of the, the compatibility issues that you want to think about. Okay. Let's go back to the slide that where I showed you the Apogee, and let's look at that. Hopefully, this picture is big enough. But on the back, we see the audio, audio, audio I/O, and this is your analog in and out, and it's on XLR. Here is your digital output, and it's AES EBU on XLR cables. Data is served via FireWire. There's also um, Optical light pipe, which in this case is sending SPDIF, not ADAT, because it's stereo, it's not eight channels. You with me? Okay, so we would call this uh, toss link, optical toss link. There actually is MIDI in and out for control purposes, but it's not, it's not MIDI like you think of MIDI where you're programming beats. It's actually to control parameters, okay, but it is a MIDI in and out. And then there's word clock. <clears throat> Well, I skipped also SPDIF. So there's two different types of SPDIF. There's the coaxial and then the uh, toss link type of SPDIF. And then word clock, which we'll just know it's there. We'll discuss really what word clock's all about in a couple of weeks. OK? So analog audio in, digital audio out, here AES, SPDIF, SPDIF. OK? Audio transmitted somewhere else via FireWire. I'll talk about in a minute where we're going with that. Just understand that this doesn't necessarily plug directly into your computer and work as an audio interface. Do you understand what I'm saying there? OK. So this FireWire is transmitting data. It's audio data, but it's data. It's not, it's not audio in the sense of AES and SPDIF. OK. So here are a few popular manufacturers of uh, a to D, D to A converters. You may be familiar with some of these names. Maybe some of them you're not familiar with. Um, Prism, Benchmark, Apogee, all make Pro Tools compatible interfaces, Pro Tools HD compatible. Behringer makes uh, cheaper, more prosumer versions of A to D, D to A converters. RME uh, is definitely geared towards Pro Audio, but it's, again, affordable. The one thing you're going to find out when you look at, start looking at uh, ADD converters is that they're expensive compared to regular audio gear. I'm talking thousands of dollars rather than a few hundred dollars. The cheapest one, I think, is at Behringer, and that one's, I think, about 400 bucks or so, which for, for Behringer is very expensive. So now, shift gears, audio interface.